This is Lewis Hart for Boxing Social in association with Empire Fight Store Forged Irish Stout. Delighted to be joining Nissa, Nissa Sowland. Um, it's been a while, mate. I've seen you come back with a, a lovely, lovely tan. How, how are things, mate? How are you? Uh, things are very good uh, until I came here and saw you lot. But no, no, no. So, hey, listen, it's good to be back. I had a nice little break, and uh, if you can call it that, very short break. But it's just good to be back at York Hall, good to be back doing what I like. There's no breaks in boxing, though, is there, mate? Never. I was on my phone the whole time and my wife's going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I suppose we're here Friday. Charlie Edwards makes his return. Um, it's a promotional debut under Wasserman. Um, I suppose I think he's probably one of them fighters that have probably lacked a little bit of love for the past couple of years. Um, to, to give that to him and I suppose start the, the Charlie Edwards 2.0 it must be an exciting journey for yourself. Yeah, I think, look, we're calling this Don't Call It A Comeback because don't call it a comeback. Charlie Edwards has been a world champion and now he's going for a world title at a new weight and um, I think he's still got a lot to prove. Channel 5 gives him the perfect opportunity because, you know, quite simply, it's got the biggest audience in, in boxing. I was going to say that, speaking to, speaking to Stephen earlier, and we spoke about sort of maybe sort of being messed around by promoters, being messed around by managers. Important now that I suppose you, you, you put your trust into him, put his faith into him back again, where it might obviously be, be struggling after, after previous experiences. Yeah, look, I, I love a comeback. Um, don't call it that, but, um, you know, I love a comeback. And everyone, all the fans, I could come back, and I could see Charlie winning another World Cup title. Um, Quite honestly, the UK doesn't have many world champions at the moment, so it'd be good to add another belt up the belt, belt to, uh, to, to to British boxing. I was going to say that, like, this is th that is the aim. Would you say, you know, for Charlie then, then to become a two-way world champion now? Yeah, we we said it already. We're not we're not, you know, Charlie's not here to. I try to give him an eight round. He's like, f off. I, I'm not doing an eight round. I want I want to get straight in. And you know, Ori provides a good test, and it's for a title. It will get him ranked higher up the. Uh, the rankings and look it's his first proper fight at this weight so it's going to be a tough challenge you'll see what we got so you sold out your call million pe millions of people work watching around around the uk and you know all the pressures on charlie and we'll see how he operates under that pressure i was going to say is there is there something that charlie needs to be careful about because he's got clear ambitions in the game but all them though they mean nothing unless he gets through on friday night You've got to be what's in front of you, and that's what he's got to do. And he needs to be focused on that. Because he takes his, his, his eye off that for one second, he could lose. For sure. And uh, I suppose we will talk about a sold-out York Hall. You know, you've got many fighters on the card. I know Tom Welling shifted, shifted a lot of tickets. Uh, Christian Fetty, he's one that's apparently shifted a lot of tickets. So excited, I suppose, for uh, to get the Wasserman talent out there and, and pushing again. I think it's great to get the, the eyes on the young guys as well. Like Tom Welland is. I'm, I'm so excited about him and you know you've got Dan Toward as well with us brilliant fighters both of them both if everything goes correctly and no, no bumps or not too many bumps in the road they'll both be world champions I was going to say what is that like in investing early I suppose being a little bit selective with what prospects that you can take you know not just the fact that they sell a lot of tickets but these guys can fight as well Listen, I was saying this earlier, the UK is blessed with a lot of talent, which is great for us promoters, great for the fans, but it's it's not great if you're if you're a talented boxer because you've got to fight for your sort of for your right to, 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 to get on the TV and you know look at uh, Harry Scoff who's fighting for the I, uh, IBF Super um, not super, it was the IBF welterweight final eliminator yeah he's he's lost twice very very closely and he's 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 never sort of had an arm around him and sort of taken him somewhere and that, now he's now he's got a final eliminator uh, Lee Eaton's done a great job of him um, and and he's one of those guys that you know has sort of no one's taken that much notice of because he's lost a couple of fights. For sure. I did want to ask you about other, other fighters in your stable. Um, Lyndon Arthur, another one, obviously coming off the back of defeat to Dimitri Bivol. Um, I saw a little exchange that he had on Instagram stories with um, Dan Aziz um, about a potential fight, you know, asking sort of Dan Aziz's promoter to start sort of put the money up. Um, ideally, that's the fight that you're aiming for, Dan Aziz against Lyndon Arthur? Yeah, that, that fight will happen in the future, definitely. Uh, we're looking to get Lyndon out in June. Um, and then get back on that road. So, okay. Look, I think li people forget that Lyndon hurt Bivol in the eighth round, and yeah, look, he was—he's he, the one guy who sort of put his hand up and went in there and fought against Bivol. So, so what you can say is that Dan Aziz ideally isn't the fight next, would you say? Listen, if the money's right, yeah. 
Fair enough. Another guy I did want to ask you about, Josh Kelly, um, high up in the WBO. And there were sort of recent uh, rumours of murmurs coming out that you know, um, Sebastian Fundora, who's a newly crowned WBO champion, maybe dropping that belt in the, in the bin. Um, the, the mandatory for the WBO is Terence Crawford. Um, ideally, could we see a fight between Josh Kelly and uh, Terence Crawford? I think we'd all love that. It'd be a brilliant fight, massive spectacle for British boxing against arguably one of the best pound for pound fighters around. Um, we've had sort of soft, soft sort of talks about it. Um, so it's not one of those ones that's off the cards. It's definitely a potential fight. He's also highly ranked the IBF. Uh, I believe he's number four at the moment. Obviously, the number one and two fought for the vacant belt, belt at the uh, weekend. Cool Kai lost. Uh, to, I always forget, Mertes uh, Yeah, um, and then you got Lundy in number uh, just above Josh. So it's really exciting times of Josh's career, and and he deserves it. To be honest, he's put a lot of hard work in since his defeat to Avenesian, and um, he's come back stronger. You think Terence Crawford will fancy a trip to the stadium of light? That'd be brilliant, wouldn't it? Um, yeah, it'd be. Uh, you know, I mean, don't put words in my mouth. I didn't that. <laughs> yeah, li listen, crazier things have happened, eh? For sure. You mentioned there about Jack Colkai. Um, obviously, a previous opponent, a guy who's got a win against, would be a Basparel. Um, I think many watching that fight would know that, sort of watching that fight, that you'd sway it in a Bass's away. Um, whatever the future may be for a Bass, a rematch between there, was something that you could look at as well? I, I'm not sure what Paul Kai is doing now, but he's, I think he's 39. Uh, we, we had great times with Paul Kai, he's with us for a while. Uh, won the world title with us, lost it to... Who just lost to... Uh, ah, I've forgotten his name. Uh, he'll come back to me. Um, so I think he might retire, I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, no, Abbas is going to defend his EVU title very soon, June, June time probably. And then um, <clears throat> very highly ranked in WBA, I think... Um, He'll be next in line for that after uh, Ortiz fights. Um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Delorme. De Thomas Delorme. No, but Ortiz is going to fight um, the guy who just won in Saudi. Uh, Israel Madrimov. I was going to say, would you take? Would you be interested in a Madrimov fight for Abbas? Yeah, yeah, we'll definitely do that. It's a world title. You got to go for it. Completely fair enough. Um, another fight I did want. Another fight I did want to talk about. Close friend of Abbas, Harlem Eubank. Um, did obviously see him square off in the ring against Adam Azim. Um, fight isn't agreed yet. Um, what can you tell us about the, the, the fight between uh, Adam Azim and Harlem Eubank? Listen, it's a it's a massive, massive opportunity for both fighters. Um, you know, we're, we 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 the Harlem did very well on on Channel Five. That we developed him very well. Uh, looked great against Timo Schwarzkopf. Um, and now he's on to big, big things now. Absolutely. Nissa, I just want to say thank you for taking time to speak to me. Really, really good to catch up with you. And yeah, I suppose uh, hopefully you'll have a good time on Friday night at York Hall, mate. Top man. Thank you. Cheers.